All right, good morning, ladies. Um, I've had a little bit of inconsistency at my work situation. So it's made it difficult for me to stay on top of a few things over here. But anyways, here I am, and I wanna talk about the pregnancy centers. And I just received an email just about what's going on over here. We have a lot of people who are trying to put a bill out that's smearing pregnancy centers. So there's a bunch of lies. And I will probably be doing videos about the lies that are being told about pregnancy centers. Um, but one of the lies is the pregnancy centers don't have um, the capability and the resources to help women and babies. So this center that sent me this has served about, it's doubled this year, I believe. It's like 1,859 clients they have had compassion on and help them out. They've also done 994 ultrasounds. So that is a lot of help. And just knowing this organization, as I do, um, I was impressed, my hair is a mess. I was impressed with um, all the help that they have. It is amazing from what I've seen. I mean, everything from baby clothes to even giving out Bibles if people want that, sharing the gospel with people. That's huge right there because you're going to change someone's life. You're actually going to save them from hell, basically, um, by sharing the gospel with someone. Also, um, what else did I see when I was over there? I think I saw they were raffling a crib. They had, um, oh, they were, they were expanding their medical facility. They were now offering like more prenatal care, more help. That was a huge thing that they had just raised money for. Um, it's, it's just everything. I mean, it's car seats, it's classes, um, it's post-abortive care, which is one of the best post-abortive care classes I have seen. Really good classes. Um, it, it's pretty much anything. And as I continue to volunteer, as I was doing some work again yesterday, um, I had called a few places and it's just amazing the amount of help. Um, one of the pregnancy centers I did not get to talk to long because they, they will get back to me because they were putting on a banquet. And that's one of the biggest things they do each year too is they put on a banquet and they raise all this money from so many people to help women keep their babies. So there's just, that is one lie that is not true, not at all. And I think another lie just off the top of my head was that they are not real doctors. They actually really do have really trained, trained medical professionals available. Um, I know this center has a professional doing the ultrasounds. And then I had talked to somebody over in New Hampshire and they did not have anybody yet to do the ultrasounds for a bus and therefore there is a resource also to get these medical experts on the buses so when you see a bus with um on the sidewalk and there are pregnancy center care bus not like the abortion buses that i heard are coming out but real buses um they do have medically trained staff on them so um at least to my knowledge um, not only do they have them, but the resource pregnancy centers are getting help with making sure they have um, that resource that if they don't have somebody who's trained, they have a resource to know where to get the help to get somebody who's trained. So yeah, these are lies that are coming out and you know, we're in a battle and it's so sad. I just saw yesterday the UK is... Um, it's now a law that you cannot silently pray on the sidewalk when you're at in front of a pregnancy center. You cannot do anything. I mean, you cannot have any so-called interference. Um, a lot of these women need help. It's a last ditch effort. You're trying to help them. They don't understand what they're doing. We saw, um, I saw yesterday, Michael Knowles, there was a video about a girl who was crying because she did not understand what she had gotten herself into. And she's just like, I killed my baby. I killed my baby. She can't even function. A lot of girls want to kill themselves after when they realize the truth. Um, be careful not to judge these girls too quickly because a lot of them do not know. They just, 
they don't know what they don't know. They've been fed a lot of lies. They haven't, you know, heard the truth. They've, they're defensive many times. Um, you know, when you're in a survival mode, you're going to have your walls up. You're not going to be able to be talked to very well. Um, so these girls, once they understand the truth, it is devastating to them. And they can't even, many of them just want to kill themselves. They feel like there's no hope. And obviously the hope is in Christ. There is forgiveness. God forgives as far as the east to the west. It's no different than any other sin. I know a lot of times we have people picking on, and it is, I'm not saying it's right. We have these people picking on this particular sin and it is disgusting and it's wrong. Um, thinking of the baby, it's, it's, there is a righteous anger, but also at the same time, you know, there is, um, you, we've got to look at ourselves because there is, there's a ton of sins involved in this. There is, you know, where's the guy? Why did he abandon her? He has more responsibility than she does. I mean, the man's the leader, right? Where is, where were her parents? Where, who influenced her? Who coerced her? Who brought her to the clinic? Let's look at the doctor who knows more than she does. And he actually killed her baby. So, I mean, it's not, I think blaming the woman usually is the, how do I say this? The weaker part of the equation here it's it's not just the woman who has chosen this usually on her own she usually has been coerced so there's a lot to this we're in a battle even the lawmakers i would definitely hold them probably 80 percent responsible for abortions with these laws that they make and they make abortion accessible i think that any leadership um, position with lawmakers, they have more responsibility than the common um, person in society. So, um, yeah, so these are the lies we're dealing with. Um, I'm just trying to think of anything else I missed off the top of my head. Just, you know, these doctors need to be held accountable. We now cannot pray. That is ridiculous. People do not know if you're praying in your head, and we shouldn't even have this law. I don't even know how they're going to prove whether someone's praying if you're not saying anything so we're in a battle for life we're in a battle life and death here um and we need to get busy as the church okay thanks for joining me